Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about back drilling. So, so back drilling is a, a manufacturing process that um, many users will need to do on high-speed designs, uh, and it involves the fabricator. And what they do is they tend to um, they'll design the board or, or make the board, and then what they'll do is they'll start to drill out some of the the stubs that are left on some of the the holes on the plated through holes where you're not using tracks. So you might use tracks from layer one to layer four, um, and then what they'll do is they'll effectively drill out the hole from the bottom of the board up to to just before layer four um, to remove that stub which can stop any signal integrity issues that you might be seeing. Some people might use a blind and bare wire for this process but um, actually using this as a manufacturing process can be quite useful. So there's several ways that you can you can apply this information um, but a good how-to or reading information is if we actually go to the cadence installation folder so cadence 17.2 there's a dock folder and then in here is an Allegro back drill folder and then there's a really really useful PDF that kind of goes through this step by step so if we actually go through the, the Allegro back drill um, there's a complete walkthrough here best practice with back drilling and what you need to do from a step by step point of view. So from a, a basic back drilling point of view let's just uh, get rid of this window <coughs> Um, you can now effectively add the back drilling information to a specific pad stack. So rather than just doing it on a design by design basis, we can actually add the information into pad stack editor. So I'm just going to open um, a pad stack that I've done this on already, just to give you a general idea. So um, there's the, the box standard drill information that you would do from your drilling. Um, but from a secondary drill point of view, you can actually enable the back drill and the back drill diameter and the manufacturing information that you want to use. And then once I enable this back drill on the design layers tab, I now get effectively a back drill start diameter that I can specify for the regular pad and the anti pad. And then I also get a back drill clearance that I can specify for anti pad and also as a keep out area. So I can physically see a keep out area in the board. Uh, that also is a, uh, useful in the the mask layer so I can have a back drill solder mask diameter and in this example is actually smaller than my actual solder mask. So once you've done the pad stack edits what you can do is you can actually refresh your pad stacks in the design or do this before you do this um, so if I look under the the tools pad stack refresh I've got a pad stack list with those two pad stacks in um, and when I do that and refresh when I view the log it's effectively updated uh, these two pad stacks for me. So to look at the two pad stacks, just to show you that the change, I'm just going to right click modify design pad stacks. You can see that this pad stack now has the back drill information, it has um, the back drill start and clearance and the new back drill solder mask. So it's in that pad stack and it's also in this pad stack. So you can see effectively I get my, my back drill start and clearance, my masks and my back drill hole diameter. So back drilling is driven from um, a net identification point of view. So if we go to Constraint Manager, we look at our net, general net properties. So properties, net, general nets. You can see I've got a back drill max PTH stub. So I can specify the, the, the maximum value here as a, as, a, as a length. And then this would identify the net as which nets needed the back drill. The, the PDF document that I showed earlier on will actually go through this step by step. So you don't try and remember everything that I'm telling you here. So once our, our pad stacks have, have been identified, our nets have been identified, we can actually start to look at the manufacturing process. So if you go to Manufacture NC, there's a back drill setup and analysis. So to start off, I can actually say, um, how do I initialize the back drill layer? So I'm just going to say, well, from the top, I'm going to go down to the, the, the lowest available layer, so layer nine, and from the bottom, I'm going to go up to layer two. So effectively, bottom up to layer two, top down to layer nine. So the, the deepest layers for both click OK and I then get effectively um, all my layers from and to the must not cut layers and what the depth is looking at the cross section so it's actually taking the depth from the cross section of the PCB. I can do this um, manually so if I actually start to delete the pair sets I can then just do a right mouse button here and do a new pair set for example I want to start on the top of the board um, using pins and wires going down to layer four if I wanted three here it would then give me three options so I can then say from the top to say layer seven and the top to say layer nine it automatically populates the must not cat layer in the depths um, I can insert ones here so I can do a right click insert pair and say maybe go to layer five and once I'm happy with those I could then enable these layers and these are the layers that I want to effectively do for, for a back drilling process point of view 
so let's just delete the pair set you can also use the layer pair initialization so maybe if you change the cross section you can get it to recalculate the values so i could have the the, the deepest layers from the top and the bottom click on create and then that would have the layers for me i can also use the minimize electrical stub length value here click on create and then that starts to add the values for me so when i close this window it shows me the layers that i want from a backdrop point of view it's also run the an analyze command so you can now see the total number of plunges that i have for each layer if we run the analyze command again i actually get a report that i can actually start to look at and um, it's given me all the information that i need from a depth point of view what the cross section is um, and then the total number of backdrop links that i have so from the top effectively going down to layer four for example i have three back drills here so back drilling isn't a cheap process um, you need to talk to your fabricator about this but you might want to try and reduce the number of plunges that you have from and two layers um, if you start to minimize these you might be able to kind of start to save some money on your fabrication process so um, i might want to look at this so let's look at layer four for example so if i just scroll down i start to see effectively my my two layer layer four um, i can actually start to identify which vias the tools are saying need to back drill and maybe by changing some tracking information i might be able to kind of reduce the number of plunges that i have so we'll just scroll in a little bit so we can see these and then i can actually just click on the coordinates here and it will take me in the screen to effectively where that via is let's just scroll in a little bit more so we can identify which specific one it's this one here so i can look at this and say well maybe i can change this this track here to a different layer so if we go into the gem edit mode get the connect line right mouse button change to layer layer three that's that one um, let's repeat this for the other one layer four so this one here yeah I could change that one to layer three as well so in the general edit mode get to the connect line change to layer three and then I've also got another one because I've got three here and going to layer four so let's just find the other one and it's it's using the layer the two layer layer four to find the layers that I need so this is the other one here it's this fire here so we'll just change this layer here to layer four change that to layer three and then we'll close the report off and when, if we rerun the the analyze command again effectively you'll see that the plunges now has gone down to zero so what i can do is i can just disable this and say well i don't need to worry about this or this one anymore there are some other tabs up here so we'll look at quickly at the pad stack parameters tab so i can specify values um, that i would use for back drilling so the same as what i did in the, the pad stack editor um, and actually add the values here and then run this just in a design point of view um, but I think the recommendation nowadays is trying to use the Patsack editor to do any back drilling setup <coughs> so you have that information there permanently if we look at the details obviously these are the Patsacks in the design that don't have back drilling information these are the two that have via the Patsack editor so this is the recommended flow really there is also a flag codes uh, tab and what this does is give me a list of effectively the DRC letters that would be used if I had any DRC errors um, as part of the back drilling process so once I'm happy with all the information that I have I can effectively then click on the back drill button the back drilling is done I'll get this kind of green icon saying back drilling is up to date and you'll notice in some of the holes behind um, <coughs> it's added things like keep out areas back drill labels and back drill diameter sizes I'll go through that in a little bit more detail in a minute um, if I was then to slide effectively one of these vias, what you'll notice is that that information is removed. So the back drilling information is removed if you make any adjustments to the design. Um, so if I go to the display and status menu, you'll see that my back drill is now a possibility or an option on my display status form and it's out of date. If I click on the update back drill, it takes me back to the back drill form and I can then click on back drill and rerun the back drill process. Okay. So if we go to. Um, back to the back drill command so back drill setup analysis there is a drill parameters tab so um, the manufacturing stub length is a value that your fabricator will give you specifically and then it's effectively it's the dimension from the bottom of the drill to um, the top of the must not cut layer um, this is a, a, a fabricator by fabricator value so you'll need to find what your fabric fabricator is going to use so when I add a value here and then I effectively go to the layer parameters tab you'll notice that I'm going to get some effectively some warnings here some DRCs so it's saying that I haven't got enough space to effectively um, a label for this so if I if I just do a left click on that it will give me the warning so I'm getting a DRC error now M to T and it's going to tell me what the manufacturing stub length what the, the, the dielectric layer is the start layer so what, what what might happen here is effectively the layer pair may need to be adjusted during the back drilling operation so effectively the the must not cut layer may well change here 
So what we'll do here is um, we can do that as part of the back drill, or we can actually add a, a, a user preference to, a, to automatically calculate for this. So if we just click OK here and go to Setup and User Preferences, look at our manufacturer and our drilling, there's a back, back drill layer pair adjustment. So we'll just enable this user preference and click OK. So if I then go to Manufacture, NC, Back Drill Setup and Analysis, you'll see effectively that my, my um, must not cut layers have changed um, and the depth has changed as well to take this into account. Um, so it's an automatic process. So we'll just run Back Drill again just to make sure we're OK. <clears throat> and that's the Back Drilling process defined. So from a visibility point of view, let's actually go and look at some of the the pins that have back drilling on. What we'll do is we'll just go into the, the layer select mode. So if we look at the solder mask, you can see a comparison effectively. So the solder mask size has decreased on the back drill holes. I'm getting effectively, um, this is the normal hole size. This is the back drill hole size. This is a back drill drill labels. And this is effectively back drilling from layer one to layer two, must not cut layer three. And also back drilling 10 to layer nine, must not cut layer eight. These are controlled under the, the setup design parameters tab. Obviously this is the, the hole size, this is the back drill hole size, this is the drill layer label. So these are quite useful from a back drilling point of view to be able to see what's going on. If we look at the top layer, obviously again, the smaller hole size here, I'm also getting a keep out area, which can help me from a DRC point of view, making sure that I don't put tracks too close to the back drill's holes. If we turn the layer select mode off, You'd also notice that if I have any existing tracking when the, the back drilling is done, it will show me a DRC error because effectively the track is too close to the keep out area. So I would need to manually go and resolve any DRC errors that I see once I have this. What I can also do is I can actually look at the pad itself. So if I hover over the pin, do a right click show elements, I'm actually gonna see the back drill information or the back drill information shown as part of the show element on the pin. So I have a record of what's going on, okay? Right, um, so from a manufacturing point of view, um, what we'll do is we'll do a, uh, a manufacturer NC drill. Well, in fact, we'll do a, uh, let's do a, a NC drill legend first. <clears throat> so I can also start to include the back drill information as part of this drill legend. So we'll say include back drill information. We'll click OK, and I effectively then get my back drill charts. So if we go to the move commands, make sure we've got groups enabled in the fine filter, I can start to just separate the, the NC charts out. So you'll see here, there's my box standard drill chart from top to bottom. I get a back drill from all the different layers. So it's, it's from top to layer two, and it's given me effectively the number of hole sizes that I've got. I've got a must not cut layer. I've got the maximum depth and the stub information, and I get a key to what's going on from a back drill point of view. And that's effectively from top to layer two, from bottom to layer nine, and then bottom to layer seven. So that's my, my back drill information here. When I go to manufacture NC, uh, NC drill. Um, I can include the back drill here, so this information then gets included in the actual NC drill file. Um, I can also do a cross section chart as well. So if we go to manufacture cross section charts, there is also an option to, to include the back drill span here as well. So if we click OK and put the chart down, you'll see it. I'll actually start to see the back drill holes that I've got included in my design.